evening to all. It's my proud privilege and honor to introduce his personality to you all, not because of he is not known. He may perhaps be the most repeated name on the lips of every clinician, and he is none other than Professor Dr. Vijay Kumar, very devoted, dynamic, and well known personality in the field of veterinary clinical medicine. He is presently working as a professor and head department veterinary university peripheral hospital Tanuvas Chennai he has more than 22 years of experience of teaching research and extension he has excellence in ultrasonography critical care cardiology endoscopic imaging techniques he worked as a pi and co pi of various schemes and projects and completed sponsored projects of more than 2 crores funded by government of india dst science and engineering research council new delhi and nadp schemes government of tamil nadu he has more than 150 research papers to his credit published in national and international journals and authored five books in veterinary science he guided four msc and three phd students and three pg uh, diploma in veterinary endoscopy he has attended various international and national conferences and presented many papers he bestowed with many prestigious national and international awards recognitions to his illustrious uh, career specially men mention isbm gold medal for outstanding contribution to canine medicine bruno memorial award for professional excellence in bvc alvedo prize medal for clinical medicine and therapeutics in mhc isbm young scientist award csir srf fellowship for phd tanuhas best clinician award and several best paper presentation awards in various conferences his greatest contribution in establishment of advanced critical care and imaging techniques of high standard college has been highly appreciated he standardized cardiac catheterization of dogs standardized the nasal endoscopic imaging of rumen and reticulum in cattle develop in vitro models for skill development for the ug and pg for the clinical procedures in dogs and endoscopic evaluation of esophageal disease in cattle uh, all these techniques were highly appreciated so with all uh, these accolades and fame he has been the other name for simplicity and approachability so i welcome professor dr vijay kumar and uh, i request him to present his topic on the paralytic ileus in bovine its differential diagnosis and therapeutic management so the uh, professor dr vijay kumar sir please um, thank you sir at the outset uh, i am very happy that uh, the organizing committee has taken steps in organizing this international online training program on advances in diagnosis and medical management of farm animal diseases so credit goes to our dean uh, bikani sir I thank uh, Dr. Sunil Agmari and uh, Dr. Kishore uh, for the wonderful arrangements they have made, and I should also thank the participants and the technology partners who have taken interest in attending this event. Technology partner is the platform to have interaction between the resource persons and the participants. so good evening uh, participants and the uh, distinguished professors and faculties from in india and abroad the topic is very simple and uh, easy topic and then uh, i should thank uh, dr bekani for selecting the topic uh, for me and uh, we have been working in this topic uh, for more than uh, four and a half years and uh, we have got uh, important uh, developments in this aspect so it is a simple thing as everyone knows for the diagnosis and management of motility disorders it is a problematic thing in the field because the clinical sign or the history is vague and we need to do the entire workout so that we can hit at the diagnosis and start treating it otherwise we lose the animal so this uh, ileus 
can be broadly divided into three groups, intestinal accidents, luminal blockage, and paralytic ileus, as classified by Constable et al. So the intestinal accidents comes under uh, mechanical ileus. It is a physical obstruction of the intestinal lumen, along with there is a part of the segment of intestine where there is infarction. In this valveless intersusception, strangulation, and cecal dilatation all comes to this one. And this is again for your information, this is a mechanical ileus. Next comes is the luminal blockage, either from inside or outside, causing a physical obstruction to the intestinal lumen and causing entrance with the onward passage of the ingestor. It can be a fat necrosis or lipoma from the external pressure, or can be a phytobuzzer or a trichobuzzer. So the luminal blockages and the previous one comes under mechanical ileus. So they were fascinated by the surgeons and physicians are more interested in the physical functional ileus and more so is our the students and the practitioners. What is the functional ileus? The lumen is physically patent, and but there is a limited passage or no passage of the ingesta. There is no obstruction, but there is a hypomotility or attaining. So the causes can be varied, but most of the time it is uncertain. And based upon your experience, you can hit at some of the causes. So we have come to a conclusion. Uh, most of the electrolyte abnormalities has caused this functional ileus, and sometimes the pre-existing diseases, which has caused the generalized depression of the animal, also accounted for functional ileus. As the animal goes for initial anorexia, maybe because of fever and peritonitis, then subsequently develops as a full-fledged functional ileus. So. The functional ileus can occur in pregnant and postpartum cows because these animals are more valuable. And if it is not properly treated, so we lose the animals and it causes a huge loss to the farmers in case of mortality. And there is a, a loss in production and the milk is also lost because the basic producer, the animal is no more. So as a because of the introduction, you know, hitting at functional ileus is not so easy. So you have to follow the meticulously each protocol taught by our teacher. So starting from the anamnesis. So also in my PowerPoint, so we'll be going on the topics, anamnesis, clinical examination, rectal examination, peritoneal fluid, hematobiochemical evaluation, radiography and ultrasonography, and as and when it is required. So don't tell that these cannot be applied to the field. All these can be taken to each and nook and corner of our uh, India, as well as in any practitioners. So you have to, if you have a thinking, then you can easily apply. But the basic things of physical examination, a meticulous stepwise, ruling out individual conditions, assisted by the diagnostic techniques if available, or by your rectal examination or peritoneal fluid evaluation, you will be able to hit the cause. Anamnesis. This is more important because the clinical signs which we are going to see is going to disappear within eight hours. And most of these things, if it is not severe, it is going to be subtle, and this can be elucidated only through anamnesis because the signs may not be present when the animal is brought to you or when the animal is, you are going to visit the animal at their farm. So the signs or colic signs may be kicking, treading of the feet as you see it in the case of torsion, uterine torsion, rolling of the animal, depressed back, groaning and bellowing, and these are non-specific signs. So spasmodic, and this occurs at uh, regular interval, but you can analyze these clinical signs 
will disappear. And these are the important clinical signs. You can also inquire from the surgeons. They will also agree that these subtle signs will disappear on later part of the, the course of the disease. So you just uh, interact with the, the clients so or the animal attender and you will get some catchy clues regarding the, the clinical signs which you have described now. And those signs are important because mostly it is associated with mechanical illness. Coming on to the clinical evaluation, which includes your physical methods of examination and every vital parameters, pulse rate, heart rate, conjunctival mucous membrane, and the respiratory rate. Invariably, this looks normal. Sometimes if it is stressed, it gets increased because of the dehydration and the subsequent electrolyte abnormalities that can occur in the ileus. It can go for a shock. So you get reduced blood pressure and increased heart rate, sometimes the weakness and goes for a recumbency. And again, I still, all these are non-specific clinical signs, but you need to go for the evaluation of these signs because it gives a clue. The general statement is the animal is not eating, anorexia, and not passing done, which is HSA. So the initial part, it will be pulse rate, respiratory rate may be normal, and the rumen motility may be reduced, and it is dry and firm, suspended rumination, and mostly if it is not passing dung for three or four days, then you will see may accompany a distended abdomen. This is an important part of your examination, should be done in every animal you see it in the ward, rectal examination. So it can be empty rectum or pasty, false smelling or mucus coated. Sometimes thick red slurry, and this may be dried flakes around the hands. So it is some sort of a dried uh, like gems, darkened gems like thing, which is adhering to the anus. So that you will see it in intersusception. Again, more uh, stressing on intersusception. Rectal examination gives an important clue. You should be fortunate enough to see the intersuscepted mass as caudal as possible. Suppose if it is very deep ventral, uh, you may not be able to reach the intersuscepted mass or intersusceptive. So this intersusceptive, if it is within reach of your hand, then the diagnosis become obvious and you can immediately refer to a surgeon. So how it looks? It is an oblong sausage shaped mass. Sometimes you may not be able to see the <coughs> intersusceptive mass or the intersusceptive by your palpation, but you can very well get the stretched mesentery and the distended loops of the intestine. Stretched mesentery will give an important clue that uh, there is an ongoing intestinal obstruction or intersusception, or intestinal obstruction is on the going process. So this is an important dung. So dung notification in the observation as well as in history becomes an important aspect because we need to know the progress of the disease. So dung and urine, oral examination, dung, that examination becomes an integral part of the physician. So this may be a normal but to see what is important in our case, it is our empty rectum. So as you notice, the, the gloves looks as if it has been inserted just now and uh, without being introduced into the rectum. So as clear, it may be an empty rectum or relatively empty rectum or sometimes smeared with the mucus or other materials, which we'll be subsequently seeing in the, the slides with individual examples. The important parameter which gives clues to locate the, the etiology is paracentesis abdominis or examination of peritoneal fluid. So this we have been routinely told by our teachers in the ward. It is a cranial site and the caudal site. The cranial site is eight to 10 centimeter caudal to the sternum and eight to 10 centimeter lateral to the midline insert the needle as gentle as you do it for epidural 
uh, anesthesia so gently introduce and you feel the pop sound or whatever it is and then see the flowing flowing freely if it is a peritonitis and normally you will may not be able to get more than 0.5 to 1 ml in a healthy animal so this shows the site of insertion of the needle then you can see the free flow of fluid if it is a, a peritonitis normally you don't get this much free flow of fluid unless it happens to be a involvement in the peritoneal cavity so again the analysis of peritoneal fluid is more important which you will be seeing it now so maybe what is that amber color so normal the quantity so which you can collect is 0.5 maximum to 2 ml cloudy which indicates the protein which you can also assess by increase in the frothiness as you collect zero sanguinous color of the fluid it indicates ischemic necrosis turbid more amount of protein and indicates it is a perforated intestine there is another site which is the caudal site just immediately cranial to the udder this is the flap of skin or fold of skin so which you need to lift it upwards or dorsally and the needle has to be directed cranial immediately in front of the udder this is the caudal site so try to put both in the cranial as well as the caudal site to elucidate whether the peritoneal fluid accumulation is more or not if you have a facility with ultrasound perform ultrasound an important point in ileus so this is uh, you have to measure the intestinal diameter 2.5 to 3.5 more than that it is now you can see this is a normal intestine and this is a intestine with ileus you can see the diameter is increased if you have radiograph so very well you can go for a radiograph in those cases which you have a gives a clue for foreign body syndrome or diaphragmatic hernia so if you the available radiograph can accommodate the specific diameter of the cattle that is studied if it is a portable fine if you are able to undertake radiograph fine well, otherwise ultrasound can be taken in any place so because it is a Uh, portable ultrasound and you can use maximum out of it so this is a simple uh, uh, outline i have given for uh, uh, understanding of the ileus basically you have to rule out each and every organ involved in the abdomen to rule out the functional ileus the idea is you rule out mechanical ileus and then diagnose it is a functional ileus your treatment becomes easy and you can save the animal as a physician taking as a case number 1 it's a cattle age 3 and 1/2 years not widing dung that is hac and there is a distended abdomen so the vitals there is a tachycardia congested mucous membrane and animal is reluctant to walk so this is the dung as and it is a little quantity you can see it is not the regular dung which you have seen in the previous slide and which you have been doing it daily and it is a important point please note down it is a raspberry jam appearance of the dung and i have put a raspberry jam here which you will be seeing in any of the the market hypermarket or supermarket you get a jam this is a raspberry fruit when it becomes a jam it becomes like this so raspberry jam like appearance of the dung so that is an important take home lesson please note down the dung will be a raspberry jam like appearance and the the important differentials for it this is a darker and the strawberry is a little bit brighter a strawberry like jam of dung will be noticed when there is a frank bleeding and there is a bleeding from the collar okay that is to to have a take home point and to have a comparison i have put this is a strawberry appearance and this is a raspberry jam appearance either strawberry raspberry jam appearance of the dung or when you do a rectal examination put on a gloves and introducing into the rectum when you take out it looks as if the raspberry jam is smeared onto your gloves 
then this is mostly giving a clue of intersubsorption or intestinal obstruction. So let us see what happened to this case. So we have subjected this to ultrasound and you can see the increased diameter. As we have discussed in the previous slide, small spherical circles will be there. And now you can see here, the diameter of the intestine is increased. Coming on to the next slide, so you can see the intersubtum. If you are lucky enough, we can see this is through the transrectal ultrasound. You can see alternate hyperechoic and echoic layers indicating the intersubtum. Now this is again a, a transrectal where you can see the, the diameter of the intestine is increased, which is proximal to the, the intersubtum. So ultimately the diagnosis is an intersubtum and again within bracket is a mechanical ileus. So immediately transfer the case to your surgeon. If you are a practitioner, expertise in surgery, open it up and to see a beautiful intersubtum or obstruction and then do the, the proper procedure of entrectomy or the suitable procedure that has been advocated. Coming on to the case number two, it is a cattle, three years and not widening done, HSA. Yeah? So now this is a case where the animal had a, a pyrexia, so treated by a veterinarian and uh, at the field, not having a facilities whether to, it is because of uh, ordinary uh, uh, tick one disease or maybe a simple uh, uh, ephemeral fever, he has put on an NSAIDs with an antibiotic for three days. This animal has been referred because it continues to be a HACA, anorectic, and distant abdomen referred to this place by the, the veterinarian for expertise opinion. So vitals happen to be apparently normal, but rectal examination, you can see it is a not normal dung and it is a little bit blackish. So please note the rectal, the dung can be influenced by your dietary factors of forages and the fodder. This is not related to that. You can see the, the dark colored dung. To have a more carry on lesson or take home point, you can have a, a example of Blackberry. So Blackberry cell phone has come into the, the, the name. It is because of the, the color, the color of the, the berry. So that is why the blackberry cell has come into existence. Now you can see to, for a take home lesson, we have put as an analogy. So it is a blackberry jam appearance or a taking into the color. So this is, a, will give you a clue that what, what is the diagnosis we'll see in subsequent slides. Subjecting to the ultrasound. So these are the intestine in between we have got the mesh, type of works and it is increasing the, the fibrous network and blackish is the fluid accumulation indicative of peritonitis. So subjecting to exploratory laparotomy, we had a huge fluid as soon as we opened the peritoneum, gushing out heavy fluid. And then, uh, so when we opened and then found there is a displacement of abomasum and then we have rectified and fixed for abomasum perxy. So the animal was alive for uh, 24 hours and then uh, later, later it went for uh, uh, mortality which is subjected for post-mortem. So these are the, the lesions in the abomasum. We washed it and it happens to so many abomasal ulcers. And this is because of the, the NSAIDs which has been used in that animal. And uh, we, it will be more clear in the next slide what is the potential cause for the death of this animal? You can see the, the abomasal ulcer through and through. And then that is the reason why the, we get a lot of fluids, peritoneal fluid. It is because of the, the content which is coming through the abomasal ulcer into the peritoneum. And that is the, the major cause for the death of this animal. Again, so this is the cause important thing to rule out. It is a ileus, the causing the distension of the abdomen subsequent to the, uh, the peritonitis. 
So this is ileus, and then peritoneal is underlying cause is abdominal ulcer, and the take home lesson is don't use, don't have a indiscriminate use of NSAIDs unless and otherwise it is warranted. Next case is case number three. It is a cow, so four years old and recently calved. And uh, there is a HACA with a severely distended abdomen. Vital signs are elevated and uh, but equally there is a increase in rumen motility. And uh, um, we can say, we can say it is related to like vagal indigestion, like increased motility. There was also bloat and uh, not able to pass the stomach tube in an attempt to relieve the, uh, whether it is a frothy bloat, we thought of introducing the tube and then relieving it, but not able to pass the stomach tube. So rectal examination relieved to the empty rectum. And the physical methods of examination revealed a peristaltic sounds in the thoracic area. So the important is you can uh, see here, as uh, you know, you have been using ultrasound, but if you, are, if you take it, important point to note down is here, this is your heart and this is your reticular area. You can see the chambers ventricle and, so, and the atrium, and this is the left part. Please focus on this area. There will be a unison movement of the reticulum with the heart. So otherwise there will be a, a separation of the diaphragmatic line will be there. This will be more clear in the next slide. So this is the reticulum, and this is your heart. So ventricle, here is the wall bicuspid, and that is the atrium. So movement of the, the uh, reticulum in association with the heart. This is a, a diaphragmatic hernia. Again, it can also be ileus, can also be the one of the cause, can be a diaphragmatic hernia, which is causing as the uh, impending the the onward movement of the ingesta, then uh, it goes for a, a well-established ileus. Case number four, age four years, not widening done, pregnant about six months, and it has got a distant abdomen. Vitals are fairly within the normal limits, and the rectal examination is related to the empty rectum. A fetus is palpable and there is a phlegmatus is good. Uh, and we have got a semi-solid done. So ultrasound is indicated that this animal is pregnant with a fairly uh, live fetus. So if the animal is pregnant, always check the fetal viability, uh, depending upon the stage of fetus, whether it is a rectal or transabdominal, because that is the most important point if the fetus is also dead, that can also go for a, a, a sepsis and subsequently ileus will be developing. So that is an important take-home lesson. If the animal is pregnant, always the fetal viability is to be assessed either through the, the, the experienced fermenters or through the ultrasound because that is more important. And we also do get in the near term, maybe uh, 10 or 15 days or sometimes as uh, long as 20 days prior to parturition, the animal can go for an alias and you literally find a, a semi-solid dung and no clues uh, will be available whether it is hematology or investigation. So it is because of the, the pressure of the pregnant uterus on the intestine and causing some uh, in, in, uh, motility problems. So most of the time, the animal becomes normal when you go with the fluid therapy. And uh, if there is a deficit, initially there is a ileus because of the pressure of the fetus and that uh, uh, the anorectic animal develops anorectic. So because of the anorexia, it can go for hypokalemia or hypocalcemia. So just rule out these things, correction of the fluid and electrolyte and making the animal walk. So literally on a uneven platform so that the, the mass gets mobilized and the pressure on the, the intestine is not there. It's a lead animal is able to pass down. We have got uh, quite a 
a good number of cases and uh, uh, mostly if it is alias due to pregnancy we had 100 percent uh, success and fairly we are able to get the uh, good cough also with uh, uh, with the cough and the dam we are able to discharge the case so you should be lucky enough to get uh, uh, the ileus due to pregnancy and uh, you'll be happy to see that uh, the animal has a fairly good calving and the owner is also happy and the treating veterinarian will uh, feel the, uh, the best out of it uh, and when he feels a live cough a dam and uh, with uh, a happiness in the farmer case five it's age three and a half years, not wide in time. You, when you see the variety of cases, which you have been seeing, it is a non-specific clinical signs, anorectic, HSA, and distended abdomen. I have given you the, the salient point in the physical, hematobiochemical, or the diagnostic equipments. But you have to meticulously go for each and everything, whether if I am going to tell, hematobiochemistry, bio, bio, NAD, physical examination, NAD, then it will be too much boring. So I have included those hematobiochemical or clinical and what is interesting in the uh, peritoneal fluid evaluation and diagnostic equipment, those catchy points, I have put it in the case study so that it becomes more interesting and to know how to rule out individual cases. So this is again vital uh, parameter in which there is a in case slight tachycardia is there, and then rectal examination related empty rectum, uh, no distended mass, a stretched mesentery to make you understand there is no involvement of the intestine, but there is a ping on left side. So what happened? There is a ping. So you go with the combined auscultation and percussion, and then uh, go with the elucidation of a ping sound and aspirate the fluid by means of lip tuck test and see the pH is acidic. So indicate you of left side displacement of a mason and then the ultrasound also diagnoses or confirms the presence of the abomasal folds here and the top you have got fluid and the left side you have got a, a gas. So this uh, gives or confirmative diagnosis of left side displacement of abamas. So the diagnosis is LDA, and then you have to correct, and then our roll and toggle method can be adopted depending upon the procedure that is available with you. Now the case number six is four and a half years old cow, and then again it is a HSA, and recently carved animal and has been treated for acidosis and uh, still not able to recover and animal as a distended abdomen. So vitals are fairly normal, but uh, the Roman uh, fluid, it was, there was no protosol. Subsequently, they are re-established with transformation, Roman cut transplantation. Rectal examination was relatively empty and semi-solid dung, but there is no distended mass or stretch mesentery, but they were hypocalcemic, and hypokalemic with a relatively fluid loss accompanied by the dehydration. So this case is, you can say there is intestinal uh, diameter is increased. So that is indicative of ileus. Okay, indicative of ileus. And this is the perfect case of functional ileus and where, so we, we can give the fluids. The treatment of the functional ileus we'll be seeing in subsequent slides. By this, you understand to hit at the functional ileus, we need to go through individual the etiologies that causes the mechanical ileus or the functional ileus, ruled out by anamnesis, physical methods of examination, rectal and peritoneal fluid examination, confirm it with ultrasound, and then you can proceed with the treatment. The treatment is very simple. It is a fluid and the electrolyte. And then uh, the important point, if it is even after fluid and electrolyte correction, if it has not passed, then you can go for a prokinetic drug. So again, it is to be established that this is a functional ileus. 
not a mechanical ileus because prokinetic drugs should not be used in mechanical ileus confirm it is a functional ileus start using the drugs you can use either neostigmine or metoclopramide or erythromycin so of the three drugs so we have got a wonderful result with erythromycin at iv and important point is don't give as such give iv diluted with normal saline and all these drugs has to be given iv because it causes cramps so it has to be properly diluted to avoid the cramps otherwise animal goes for a cramp and there will be a uh, the the what is a positive expectation will not be there so dilute it in the fluids and then start the, the treatment so important this one why this is given in red color so neostigmine and metoclopramide is not a problem you can start using it the best is obtained through erythromycin but i am uh, uh, giving a cautionary note but this being an antibiotic coming on to the one health concept so try to use it so when you are not able to achieve the, the required the result with the neostigmine metoclopramide and fluids then you can try this and always use this as a last resort so in a valuable pedigreed animal so which will outweigh the results so if we are need absolutely healthy animal if it is a, a good productive animal then you can go it considering the on health concept the fluid therapy is more important because we may need 15 to 18 liters per animal so insertion of the catheter is the hallmark of the treatment of ileus either you can go with this or jugular jugular catheter also you can fix so you can see we approximately give about 15 to 20 liters per animal depending upon the dehydration try to correct the hypokalemia or hypocalcemia that is being present the assessment of dehydration there is a lot of tables available in the standard textbook as well as the journals so those things you can use it 5 to 6 or 68% or 8 to 10% 10 to 12% so based upon this the right side is giving the clinical sign left side uh, that first row or the column gives you the, the percentage of dehydration kindly substitute in this formula fluid re required in liters is percentage of dehydration body weight so this you can give to the animal so plasma has to be replaced immediately and then remaining can be re replaced over a period of 24 hours so if it is a hypokalemic kindly give a uh, supplement of potassium potassium has to be given very very slowly so it is available as danella ampule 10% 1.15% is equal to 3.0 ml per kg per hour otherwise the easy thumb rule is you give three ampules of 10 ml each so maybe 30 ml diluted in each 500 ml of sachets maybe a normal saline or you can go for dextrose normal saline so you go very slowly or you can follow the scott sliding thumb rule if you are going to give faster then it go it goes for the cardiac arrest so this is the sliding scott thumb rule you can use this so depending upon the ml per kg per hour depending upon the concentration available in the serum for which you need to estimate this and then do it so so if the animal is able to accommodate in the room and you can also go for oral rehydration therapy using a pump so you cannot expect the animal to drink so you can use it through a pump so literally you can do it by intravenous route where you get immediate results so since the animal is already anorectic so you go for uh, 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 intra ruminal administration using a pump provided the rumen can accommodate the required quantity of fluid so oral rehydration you can use with the pump many type of pumps are available and then use this pump and then uh, we can administer this is a device where we can easily pump in 20 to 25 liters with a, a beautiful roman infusion pump into the roman so that uh, with a piece of things i have gone a uh, little bit fast and i have uh, uh, finished this over to the organizers uh, for the questions or any other uh, supplementation thank you sir uh, thank you are there any questions
Please display those questions, please. Dr. Santosh? Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Please display the questions. Ah, one, yes, minute. Sir. one minute. Dr. Mary? Yes, sir. Yeah, I am able to see the chat, sir. I'll if the questions are from the chat, I'll yes, sir. do it. If there is already some questions, somebody can uh, read it out. Now, first, let me finish the the questions available in the chat. Yes, Dr. Kasing uh, is uh, asking: Is the condition of paralytic ileus common in bulls? Yeah, come on, the, uh, it is also available in bulls. So mostly because of diarrhea. So paralytic ileus in bulls. Usually bulls are well maintained. Uh, so we rarely come across. So, uh, but the paralytic ileus do occur in bulls. So one of the important etiology is dietary. Yeah, can you please discuss, uh, Dr. Chandan is having, can you please discuss treatment of abomasal ulcer? That is a good question, but I will tell you, instead of treating the abomasal ulcer, so kindly prevent the occurrence of the ulcer. So uh, what we do it, we, we follow a strategy of not using NSAID in the ward at all. This I have been telling in many of the forums. So uh, if you ask a, a question during the YOOC to our students in medicine section, please uh, tell uh, NSAID they will blink because they are not using. We don't use NSAIDs in medicine ward. And because this is very specifically goes to the musculoskeletal, which has been treated in surgery. Instead of treating it, please avoid the ulcers. Occasionally you can use it. Clonexin is one of the drug you can use it. Maybe phenylbetozone, you can use it, but always protect your stomach. Within bracket, it is your abomasal. As you do it for your dogs or equine, protect it with this one. Rantidin is not available, so you can always go with a pantoprosol. So it is very rare, you are not going to. That is why uh, 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 in human, take an example from the dentist. Before going for uh, uh, extraction of the tooth, he gives you uh, uh, this one. Uh, what he gives, it gives uh, analgesic. But along with the analgesic, he gives pantoprosol. So take it from your sister concern, how they are treating. They are protecting the the stomach with the pantoprosol and then give analgesic that is called a preemptive analgesic before doing the extraction of the tooth. So that you should always follow. And uh, please use uh, pantoprosol or uh, uh, this uh, rangeling. So for if it is available with you, but pantoprosol does good. Explain prokinetic that is drug by Nagendra as used, so Dr. Nagendra. That's a very good question. Eh? We can use the drugs which we have uh, indicated because they, they promote the onward movement of the ingesta by promoting the motility. These are very good prokinetic drug. One of the effect of erythromycin group, macrolide group is the, the prokinetic function. So uh, uh, that of which we have done uh, uh, work for more than four and a half years. And uh, we have found that erythromycin group is fairly good, of which the azithromycin only is available as an injectable form. That is why we are recommending azithromycin. Because erythromycin is all human preparation, it is all oral, so we do not get. So you go with uh, uh, azithromycin, it's an excellent, but please follow the One Health concept and the repeat dosing. Although you have got successful in getting the motility, and for your, for, because you have asked, I'll tell you, you will get the success within a mat of uh, 18 to 20 hours. The animal which has been admitted, not passing dung for 10 days, animal becomes fairly normal within 16 to 18 hours. So, but please follow the antibiotic in the dose which is supposed to be given. If you work out, it will be still costly, but very, very useful to save the valuable animal of 60 to 80,000. And uh, you may ask why we should not use neostigmine and metaclopramide. You can use it, but uh, the efficacy is not as good as uh, this drug. Please have it within yourself. Don't tell to others because of the one health concept. Then, um, 
oral rehydration pump. If you want the oral rehydration pump, it is available in any of the online uh, uh, stores. So many companies are there. But still, if you if you want, it is available with Tanwas. You can just write a, uh, put on a mail to the um, uh, to the farm university research farm. Professor that university research farm Tanwas. He will give you over the mail. He will give the uh, the, uh, the invoice, and you can do NEFT and get the pump. Okay, so uh, oral radiation pump is available with. Uh, uh, university, so you can do it, or online through many agencies are available. You can get. Then uh, Dr. Navin has asked how to manage peritonitis. Yes, that is an important question. So mostly, if it is from the hardware disease, that is you already know it. Uh, to try to prevent it from the upper muscle ulcers. So management of abomasal ulcer is more important. So if it is from the hardware disease, restriction of movement is more important. That is why you do it in the cranial as well as the caudal paracentesis abdominal, the two sides. If you get free fluid, both in the cranial side as well as in the caudal side, so that is a diffuse peritonitis. There is no meaning in treating it if it happens to be a peritonitis. Within bracket, rule out if the the fluid accumulation because of hypoproteinemia due to parasites or low protein. So rule out that apart from hypoproteinemia because of low protein or parasite, you get fluid in both the sides. It is a diffuse peritonitis. You can directly for contamination of animal. If it is, if you get fluid in one side, then it is a localized peritonitis. And the first one is an antibiotic. Important point is immobilization. So restrict the activity tie the animal in one place so that there is a addition formation and then it gets localized. So followed by our antibiotic and the animal becomes uh, all right. But try to give the prognosis to the owner that maybe a pregnancy or maybe when the animal falls down, this localized thing can become a diffuse peritonitis. So you always give a, a prognosis to them this what has been localized can the animal can develop a, again one more episode of peritonitis depending upon the situation. Dr. Ravindra has told uh, yeah NACD so this is if we are going to we are going to have a double advantage so that is what we have been telling uh, NACD is we are going to minimum use yes we are we are going to save the vulture which is one of the important uh, protocol or the and the steps to be taken by every veterinarian to protect the, the avians also. So that way also we are helping things. So please be have concern with the animals as well as with the clients. Don't be with the overwhelming response, put an NSID, the fever subsides and you feel happy and then get the fees and the owner is also happy. Within bracket, you please take it from me the animal is going to develop abomasal ulcer. So that is why, and you are going to lose the potential client and as well as the, the cattle. That is why we are telling again and again, have a judicious use. I'm not telling, don't use. Have a judicious use of NSAD for the mere reason we need our valuable client as well as the, the cattle, just because they are producing milk and saving the economy of the country. What is the dosage of pantoprosol in large animals? If you are going to go by dose wise, it becomes huge dose. So kindly use at least two vials of 40 milligram uh, IV. So if you are going as such uh, like a dose, it will be very number of vials. It goes to seven or eight. So at least use two vials. Dr. Suresh has asked how neostigmine works in, again, it is a, Prokinetic drug. Can it be possible to correct mechanical ileus? Perrectally, Dr. Arshid has asked. I don't think you will be able to do it correctly. It is not like uh, uterine torsion. Even uh, the the gynecology experts have to tell it is very difficult to correct uh, uh, the the torsion through uh, 
recto or vaginal assisted correction. So best is once you know mechanical ileus, please open it up and correct it. If you are even I am advising, if you are a physician, don't uh, spend your time in step uh, this one uh, treating the case for one or two days. Immediately tell the owner and then transfer the case to a re regional college or center or to your surgeon. Don't don't delay the case mechanical ileus case. That is why please take the take home lesson raspberry jam appearance. You should always remember raspberry jam appearance. Dr. Sbanker Baidya told me 8 to 10 days functional ileus can be treated with good result by metaclopramide. Yes, you can get, but uh, that is why the choice is yours and your experience. So again, this uh, the uh, metaclopramide or neostigmine or azithromycin, you have this as uh, your choice. And based upon whichever is helpful, you can do it. Maybe like your antibiotic. I am very much fascinated by one drug. I'll be repeatedly using, I get good uh, uh, result from that. And again, maybe the anti the organism in my area is going to respond to that antibiotic. I'll be sticking on to that antibiotic. I, I am very much fascinated by that. Similarly, you can, the choice is yours, metaclopramide, neostigmin, or azithromycin. You can use whichever drug which is going to give the result. Ultimately, our cattle should become all right. That is our idea. Mr. Bharat asks, how can you calculate dehydration rate? Yeah, this is uh, for the want of time uh, because Dr. Bikani sir has given me only one hour. So that's why I rushed to it. But there is a, stable, the, a, a standard table is available where there are two columns. Left side is the percentage of dehydration. Right side, they have given the clinical sign. See the clinical sign available on the animal. Mostly the two or three parameters, sunken eyeballs, okay, sunken eyeballs and the skin turgor test and the degree of the CRT and the cold extremities. So based upon this, then you will get the value of percentage of dehydration, which is available on the, the first column. So that is substituted in the formula given in the, the slide. You will be able to get the, the dehydration percentage and you'll give the total number of letters to be given to the animal. If you, if you still have a, a difficulty, just to pump in 10 liters. The aim at 10 liters, start giving five liters, put on the IV fluid cannula, then you can leisurely calculate because you've got a lot of time. Minimum you have to spend with the animal two to three hours. So you have got a lot of time. Just to start IV fluid therapy with five liters and then you can start doing it. Please explain the role of azithromycin paralytic ileus. Azithromycin is an antibiotic macrolide, but it has got a best effect as a prokinetic agent. Dr. Karankar also asked azithromycin and pantoprazole. Azithromycin I have given, sir. Dose of pantoprazole we have discussed. Can you use intraperitoneal leverage? Dr. Arshit Saxena has asked, can you use intraperitoneal leverage of antibiotic infusion in peritonitis? So you can try, sir, but uh, our uh, idea is never touch the peritoneum. So touching of the peritoneum with an antibiotic is always when you are exploring, maybe a laparotomic surgery or when you are going for a cesarean section. Otherwise, uh, there is no need of uh, intraperitoneal administration of antibiotic. IV is the best. Dr. Nagendra has asked minimum how many days to use. So it is again, it's a judicious thing. Let the animal have pain, sir. Let the animal have pain. So the animal will not move. If you give analgesic, animal will not have pain, so it will move. So uh, most of the time it is to have a immobilization. So let it have a pain. And then uh, what is the desired thing? In any of the medical conditions, I don't think we need an NSAIDs. So I think you can avoid that. If at all, if you need, you, you can go for a phenyl betazone or minimum things. Uh, what is the, uh, Dr. Shubankar has asked, clinical differentiation between peritonitis, vagal indigestion, and paralytic layers, all put together, it's a one or less mixed allied syndrome. Vagal indigestion, the, the catch one point is increased uh, motility sir, of the rumen. And when you are going to intubate with the stomach tube, you get the gushing of the fluid through the, uh, the tube. 
and uh, uh, with the rectal examination, you can see the L-shaped uh, rumen. Physically, when you are going to visualize the animal from caudally, it is like a papal-shaped abdomen. So although you, many may not be able to recognize L-shaped uh, rumen or papal-shaped abdomen, you can very well appreciate the increased motility in the early phase. Then it goes for a, a tony. In which, which stage you will see the severe distension of the abdomen. Peritonitis, that is why I have told you in all these cases, put on a needle. You can have, the needle is available throughout the world. You take an 18 gauge needle, put the needle. If it is a peritonitis, even if you are a beginner, if you are putting the needle for the first time in your life, you will get fluid. You will never fail in getting the fluid in a peritonitis. So please practice the procedure of peritoneal fluid analysis in each and every case you see. You become an expertise. Peritoneal fluid analysis, rumen fluid analysis, oral and rectal examination are integral part of examination of a cattle. You want to come to your diagnosis, all these four are the preliminary thing. Then needless to say, vital signs. So other things are already emphasized by your teacher. Please do the meticulous protocol. Definitely you will get the result. Don't get bothered about the fear that you will puncture anything. You will not do any puncturing and you will not harm the animal. Please use 18 gauge needle at the desired site. You will get the fluid. Uh, I think uh, we have cleared uh, most of the questions, sir, and then uh, I am uh, uh, handing over the mic to the organizer, either Dr. Sunil Wagmari or 